Hi, today I would like to present to you a very simple but at the same time very powerful use case on which we are going to take advantage of the very light suite components such as realize automation, your apps, and also the newly introduced we realize soul stack configuration module. Uh, for this scenario, I'm going to I'm going to use a web server, the one I'm showing right now. This web server is, is just a simple e-commerce site is deployed using Virilize Automation. This is the actual deployment. It's very simple. It takes um, uh, it only takes a couple of resources, a database, and a front-end application. Uh, these resources are put together using cloud templates. And we can instant those as many times as needed. The application is going to be a store in a version control server, in this case, GitLab Enterprise. This is where my source code is going to be. And the actual installation of the application, this application that I just mentioned, is going to be possible through the virtualized source stack configuration. So you can see there is already a target uh, deployed and configured and actually showing that the application was executed and you can see here that I have a lot of metadata already uh, brought from VRA into the virtualized whole stack. And the problem that we have in, in this use case is that we discovered a bug, something simple, nothing major, it's just a name. Instead of reading bootcamp, we should have uh, said something like Moat Electronic Superstar. So somebody reported the issue, so we are going to fix it, right? So we we reach out to the developer and the developer is going to do the fix, which in this case is very simple. What I'm so showing you right now is just the, the code that I need to modify to fix this, this little problem, right? <clears throat> so in this file, I just need to replace the string. I found it. I'm going to put uh, the new string that I want to push into my application. A couple lines, nothing major, very simple. So I'm going to save it. And then, just like any other code, I'm just going to, you know, build my commit, packaging my commit, uh, add a meaningful message so my peers working with me in this application can understand what I'm doing. And then I'm just going to push it, right? Um, it's an authentic repository, so I'm going to provide my credentials to access. Great, now my code is being pushed to my main repository. As I mentioned before, this is the GitLab Enterprise. And we can see right here that is my commit. In fact, we can explore a little bit further. <clears throat> and you can see precisely the changes I just um, did. And as a developer, that's all I want to do. I don't want to do anything else, right? But I want to make sure that my application is properly built. I want to make sure that my application is properly set together, tested, and promoted all the way to, to production. So, but I don't want to do too much about that. I want Virilize Suite to help me to, to work it, right? And right here, in fact, I'm getting a notification from, from Virilize Automation, and to be precise, from the cost stream pro, uh, module. And in fact, it's been sharing uh, the dashboard of a CI CD pipeline that I defined to work with this kind of development, right? And you can see right here that the pipeline has been triggered just by pushing my new code into the repository, right? That's all it needs to be ready to be monitoring the repository and taking action. In this case, it's going to run my, my jobs, and you can tell that I've been playing around a little bit with this. And it's very useful, this dashboard, because it tells me where I need to focus the most, right? Right here, I'm looking into uh, that I need to improve my build process. Probably uh, my, my code is not being uh, effectively put together. Even the testing is telling me that it's, it's failing a lot. So I, I think I need to pay more attention to my code, but that's okay. That's that's actually, I know now where I need to, to put my focus on. And you can see right here that I have uh, details about how everything is progressing, right? All the little stages and the tasks associated to those stages, like in this case, <clears throat> As I mentioned before, I want to build some temporary infrastructure so I can test my code. And what is really fantastic about that is that I can use the same cloud template that I showed you in the beginning to reproduce 
and exactly copy the what I have in production. Here you can even see that this name of this new deployment is actually including the commit ID that I put together, right? That's by, that's by my definition. So I'm going to create this new infrastructure, right? So I'm going to show you a little bit more about those specific um, tasks that is going to be happening. In fact, I'm going to be using two pipelines, right? I'm going to nest one of those so I can reuse existing pipelines into my new my new flow, which is uh, the CICD process for this application. So right here, you see that there's a deployment going on. You see that it's using my commit ID because this is an information that Costream is able to collect from the repository. And then I'm just instructing how I want to do it, right? So I'm pre-staging all the information that needs to happen. Like in this case, I'm going to be using development. So I want to tag it that way. I probably may decide to use a different uh, virtualized all stack configuration module. Who knows? Whatever it needs, right? I got the flexibility to put it into parameters. And once this is deployed, I want to test it, right? That's very important, right? I want I want to do the testing of this application. So I'm going to define my specific testing for this application. And then I'm going to reuse our standard testing suite, which is actually available as another pipeline. So you can see here, I'm defining just another task. The type is pipeline. And then I'm just indicating which one it is and whatever parameters it needs in order to run, which the real cool part about it is that it's going to take information from this master pipeline and I can pass it all the way down to this uh, children pipeline that is going to be doing the testing for me. So going a little bit back to the dashboard, we can tell that the deployment is completed and the testing itself has started. Uh, all the information available uh, as part of this deployment, in this case, this is deployment task, anything that I put together, input, output, that information can be actually used by the, the pipeline, right? And can be reused for any task or any other um, pipeline, as I show you. And you can see right here that my deployment has been uh, completed successfully. It's exactly a replica of what I have in production, which is critical. I want to make sure that is is precisely the exactly same application. Furthermore, uh, I want to set some boundaries. In this case, you can see, you can see that I set some um, service broker list policy. So for anything that is development, I don't want to keep it for so long. I want to keep it for one day. For my production work, uh, word logs, I, I want to have different policy, which I can change at any point, right? But let's go back to the testing. You can see the testing is ongoing. And it can run in parallel. And you can see, as I mentioned before, that in parallel is running my standard testing, but also is going to call another pipeline for for uh, further testing. That's something that we use all the time for web-based application, regardless what they are exactly. And at any point, just like the deployment, I can actually stop my, my pipeline. I can restart it. I can remove it. I can pause it and so on, right? I got operations around this CICD definition. So my first test is completed. And my more extensive test, which is coming from the pipeline, is still ongoing. But you can see that, again, it's a different kind of task. It has different execution, but the information that is spitting out that this task is actually going to be available to me. And again, I can use this information for whatever purpose, right? I can use uh, output from this, this execution from this testing and say, well, this attribute is going to be exported out and it's going to be used in a condition for the next task. If my levels are behind that, that, that value, then I, I claim that this fell. Or if it's higher, then I can say, yeah, this works. And now you can see that we keep progressing. In fact, Costream sent me another notification telling me, telling me that I need to review uh, the new build, right? Because that's part of my process. So I define it that way. So again, I'm showing you what is under the hood. As a developer, all I had to do was to, to push the chain. And you can see that, yes, my chain worked, uh, that my application was built, but also installed by Virilize Solstat configuration, right? And you can see that it's a new target corresponding to this new deployment. So looking into details, you can see in terms of activity for this new target, there is uh, an execution that happened. I didn't have to do anything else other than let Solstack to detect these changes and instruct my application to, to, to install. In fact, it happened because I put it into the standard target for all um, MOAD applications. And you can see right here that it detected the two of them. 
And it's a smart enough to tell that I don't need to do anything in the first target because it's already installed. So that's why you don't see any activity. But for the second one, which is empty, it's going to do something, right? It's going to create a user. It's going to inst install the packages install, yeah, among them, my application, right? So you can see right here, uh, all the dependencies are installed. Everything that needs to happen and instructed by me is executed by Realize uh, source stack configuration. But not only that, right? Uh, Costream is also sending me some notification so I can go to, to VR apps and I don't really need to log in. It's just showing a, a dashboard to me that is targeting my specific MOAD application. Uh, this is a small dashboard that I put together as part of the process. I can modify it any further. And this is live data, right? So you can see all my, my resources displayed here. You can see that they are properly tagged. You can correlate the information that is on VRA and that is that it has been detected by VR Ops. So I haven't done anything else. I don't really need to worry about it. This information is going to be detected by VR Ops, all those resources. And you can see some information, some KPIs as a result from my um, from my testing, right? So you can see that I did some sort of minor performance testing. So you can tell that, yeah, my CPU uh, is within the limit, so it's the same as the memory. So I can tell that whatever I'm doing, whatever changes I perform, uh, I can validate that, yeah, they are within the KPI limits. And, and this is per my process, right? Your process may be different, but what I want to emphasize is that you have all these tools available as part of the Realize Suite that you can leverage, right? And you can expose it. Again, I'm the developer. I get access to all this information. So I can validate that this is good. This works. So I'm actually going to uh, authorize the, the, the promotion to the production. Right? This could be my operations team. It could be somebody else from my team. Whoever I define needs to authorize this. So great, it, it was taken. So now I'm promoting this into production, which means that I'm going to perform the upgrade. And this is really cool because the upgrade is only going to happen through source stack as well, right? But this time it's going to use the new build and it's going to push it into the existing application, right? And it's one single command that I need to to run as part of my uh, upgrade process because the heavy lifting is going to happen by the realized source stack configuration. And you can see that it's actually going on, right? It's active job and it's one single line. Again, one single line instructing what needs to happen, right? All the orchestration that we realize source stack configuration needs to do. And here's the response back from the server, right? It's telling me that, okay, I applied your upgrade and it was successful, right? So great. At this point, you can see that the job has been complete. In fact, we can go to the specific target and we can double check that this has been executed for us, right? And it's going to be a little bit different than in installation because this is a target um, upgrade. So you can see right here, that is pretty much the same information. It told me the time it took and what happened in there, right? Again, as a developer, I don't really need to go this level. All I care is about the notification, but I want to show you a little bit what's happening under the, under the covers. So at this point, I can actually restart my, my web server and you can see that my upgrade, very simple upgrade happened. So it's completed. I didn't have to do anything other than push my code into my repository and let um, the realize automation together with all the components to do the job for me, right? And right now, just as due diligence, I'm going to test this upgrade because even if something goes out at this stage, I can implement rollback actions such as rollback the update and I can use the same mechanism. I can use the same um, techniques that I just presented to do the upgrade, but to roll back, right? And right now, and very importantly, I want to run my, my infrastructure very efficiently, right? So at this point, this temporary server that I created as part of my process, I don't need it anymore. It fulfilled its purpose. So it helped me to validate my, my new build. So I don't need it anymore. So I'm going to remove it. So I want to free resources, reclaim resources for my team or even for myself, right? So again, I got my production done. Uh, thank you very much.